Can your network be hacked? You know, I'm about 90% sure that it can, but there are some things that you can do to help you not be so vulnerable. Vulner vulnerable? Vulner vulnerable. So in this video today, we're going to be going over seven things that you can do to avoid network hackers. Welcome everybody to our networking series for beginners. We started out building out a small home network, and now we have got all the way to episode number six, avoiding hackers. And you know, speaking of avoiding hackers, just yesterday, if you are not familiar with the YouTube channel Linus Tech Tips, he just got his YouTube channel hacked, lost everything, took the channel down. Now I know I would be absolutely devastated if that happened to me. I am doing my best to prevent that altogether and prevent me from getting a virus, from me getting my credentials fished, anything like that. I actually just built a virtual machine this morning to just manage my emails. Everything I do with emails, any attachments that I open is going to be done on a virtual machine and kept completely away from any of my production machines. Now, it seems like over the last few months, a lot of big channels have been hacked. Linus Tech Tips, Jerry Rig Everything. There are other handful of ones out there. And also just a PSA for anybody out there who is watching this. If you see your favorite YouTube out there, make a comment saying, hey, you won something for free, go ahead and send me a message on WhatsApp or Telegram or anything that is off-site. It is a scam, don't fall for it. I've run giveaways, other big channels have run giveaways where we have said that we were gonna give something big away and this is just prime territory for scammers to come in, pretend to be that user, whether it's me or another big user saying, hey, you want some message me off-site and the scam is that you know what, I'm gonna send you a new iPhone, whatever it is, you just have to pay for the shipping. Send me $200 and I'll go ahead and send you out this device. It's a scam, it's fake, don't fall for it, whether it's with myself or anybody else. Always be skeptical, don't send money to anybody. Okay, now that that rant is over and you guys are more aware of it, if you wanna know more that is going on with me, behind the scenes stuff, things that are coming up with the channel, I do a lot of that stuff over on Instagram. You can follow me at this link right here. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, it helps the YouTube algorithm push it out to more people. So I will be eternally grateful for that. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started into ways to help you protect yourself from hackers. Okay, so what we need to do to get started is log into our router. Now, the first thing that I want you to do is check to make sure your firewall is turned on. Now for most new routers out there, this is going to be on by default and some of them you're not even gonna be able to turn off on your own. For the example that I'm looking at right here, I'm logged into my Orbi router. I can't even turn off the firewall if I wanted to. But if you have an older router or maybe a different router, say for like this TP-Link one right here, you can actually go into the settings and turn that firewall on. So make sure that you do that. I would recommend Googling it because I don't know what router you have. So Google the router that you have, search for firewall and see if there is a feature to turn it on. Now let's dive into the settings of my router right here. So I have got the Orbi Pro router right here. And what I wanna do after we enable our Wi-Fi settings is that we wanna go in and also check our port forwarding. So for me on here, I'm gonna click on the advanced tab. I'm gonna to go to advanced setup down here and then check port forwarding. Now, I don't have any port forwarding turned on right now, but if you do, I would recommend turning that off. You don't wanna be punching holes through your firewall to allow any kind of hacker to get into your system. So if you have anything listed in port forwarding that you don't necessarily need, definitely disable it. Okay, the next one that I wanna check out right here, let's go ahead and scroll down, remote management. This is something that you never want on. You don't want to allow somebody to remote manage your router. Now, if they attempt to try to get into your router, they will need a username and password, but if you've kept your same username and password, that is going to be a big deal. So if you have this option right here, go ahead, turn off the remote management on here. We're gonna go ahead and click on apply to apply this setting, get that off. Now, the next one here we kind of just mentioned, updating your admin username and password. You never want to leave this on the default. Defaults are typically going to be username admin, password admin, or maybe admin password. They're pretty standard defaults when you're setting up your router. So you're going to want to change that right away because any hacker that is trying to get into your system is automatically going to start with the default settings, assuming that you never change them. So if we take a look at here on my site, I'm gonna go ahead and click on administration. We're gonna go down to set password. 
and look right here my username is admin don't want that update your username to something unique and your password now the next thing you want to check and update is your firmware software you want to make sure that is up to date if we look right here actually on the top this whole time it says right here a new firmware is available for my system I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It's gonna bring me into the firmware update. This can update the firmware for me. It's gonna go reach out to the internet and update that for me. If your router does not do that, you may have to actually go to the website of your manufacturer, download the updated firmware and install that manually. Now, the biggest things, the reason you are going to want to make sure your firmware is updated is because the manufacturer either has new features for that router or they are patching known vulnerabilities. As they know there are vulnerabilities out there for their systems, they're gonna push out firmware updates to close up any gaps or holes for hackers to be able to get in. So make sure you are updating your firmware. Now, the next changes that we're gonna make here are going to be to our actual Wi-Fi settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on setup right here, go to wireless setup and change some of the few things here. So we look right here, my SSID, it is set to my manufacturer name and the actual model of the router that I have set up. This is the absolute worst. Hackers will drive around neighborhoods searching for wireless routers that they can take advantage of. It's called war driving. They drive around with a powerful wireless device where they can see if you've got potential default settings for your system. Right here, we're looking at this one right here. It's giving away my manufacturer and my model number. They can then go and do a search for potential vulnerabilities using standard admin names and passwords to try to break into your wireless system. So make sure you don't let that happen. Update your SSID or your wireless name to something unique to you. Also, what we want to do below that is we've got our password. For the password, I would recommend not using a single word, but actually using a passphrase. This is something that we talked about in a previous video. Make your password as strong as you can. This password can be up to 63 characters. So instead of using a password like password or Netgear or something simple, use a pass phrase. The example we used before was using something like you can't handle the truth. Replace some of the letters with different symbols and numbers, something to kind of spice it up a bit, but use something that is more complicated. Now you might say, but if I make something too complicated, then when I have guests over, they're not gonna be able to easily connect to my network. I don't wanna give out that password to people. Well, you shouldn't allow your guests to connect to your main Wi-Fi system anyway. You're gonna wanna set up a guest network. On here, we have the ability to set up our own separate guest network. So set this one up, click enable, create a unique name for it. So this one is going to be its own name on its own VLAN. We're gonna set our security options. We also wanna make sure we've got the best security options on there, at least WPA2 on here. So we're gonna go ahead and select that one, set a network password. We also wanna have a password. We don't want just anyone driving by being able to connect to our guest wireless. And speaking of security, I'm gonna go back here to wireless one. This is gonna be my main wireless on my account right here. I've got security options here. Like I mentioned before, you want to be using at least WPA2, if not WPA3. Now, if you try to use WPA3, if you have an older device that is not compatible with that, it might not work. So we're gonna go ahead and select this one right here. This is going to be both. It's gonna give us WPA2 and WPA3 capabilities so that way, if it's capable of WPA3, it'll use it. If not, it does still use the WPA2 for security. So the last thing I wanted to mention to protect from hackers, we're gonna go in here and go up to setup and we are going to go to WAN setup. So this right here, respond to pings from the internet. Essentially what that means right there is that if someone outside of your network from the internet tries to ping your home network, your network is not going to respond, which is what we want. If somebody outside of your network finds out what your public IP address is and tries to ping it, we don't want it to respond. So we're gonna turn off respond to pings from the internet. No, uncheck that. 
go ahead and click apply and get that set up because sometimes what hackers will do is they're going to try to ping your public ip address to be able to see if you are up and running to see if they can test out any vulnerabilities against you okay well there you have it those are some of the steps that you can do to avoid hackers from getting into your home network. If you have made it this far into the video, thank you so much for sticking around. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. I will do my best to answer those for you. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Tell others about it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.